acting, talent, success. Hundreds and hundreds of people throughout the world wake up daily with a decision that acting is what they really want. To become a good actor, possibly a star, some travel huge distances in search of that great school, teacher, or workshop. Throughout time, there have been many amazing actors and teachers. I'm Ken Kerman, a working actor for the past 17 years, thanks to the Michael Chekhov method. I invite you to learn about one of the greatest acting systems and the man who created it, Michael Chekhov nephew of the celebrated Russian playwright Anton Chekhov and protege of Konstantin Stanislavsky, the father of contemporary acting. Michael Chekhov's success on the stage as an actor and director at the Moscow Art Theater brought him to Broadway and later to Hollywood. From Russia to Hollywood is an award-winning documentary that profiles this journey, during which Mr. Chekhov developed an entirely new system of actor training. He influenced many brilliant actors, such as Marilyn Monroe, James Dean, Hugh Brenner, Jack Palance, Leslie Caron, Anthony Quinn, Mala Powers, Clint Eastwood, Anthony Hopkins, Johnny Depp, and Jack Nicholson. Married men, air conditioning, champagne and potato chips, it's just a wonderful party. You're tearing me apart. What? You, you say one thing, he says another, and everybody changes back again. In the 1940s, there were two Russian-born men whose quest for awakening genius in performing artists proved to be the unseen force behind many Hollywood legends. Michael Chekhov, who died in 1955, and his good friend George Stanoff. The tumultuous lives of these two men is not only their story, but the story of the 20th century. Why did Michael Chekhov and George Stanoff dedicate their lives to mastering the essence of artistic genius? From what inner source did the passion to pass on these secrets come? And why is the work of these two men virtually unheard of in comparison to Stanislavski, Stella Adler, Sanford Meisner, and Lee Strasberg. The Chekhov Theater co-director, George Stanoff, carried on the Chekhov work after Mr. Chekhov died in 1955. That was a clip narrated by Dre Gregory Peck as he speaks of Chekhov and Stanoff. Even though Chekhov found himself in trouble with Stanislavski's technique, Stanislavski referred to Chekhov as his most gifted student and called his performances brilliant. Today we are here to explore that extremely talented man, Michael Chekhov, one of the most extraordinary actor teachers of the 20th century. There are few people in the world as qualified to speak of Michael Chekhov's system as Lisa Dalton. Lisa is a working actress, director, teacher, and producer who has been involved with Michael Chekhov's work since 1980. She studied with nearly a dozen of Mr. Chekhov's students, including Chekhov's estate executrix, Mala Powers, and George Stanoff, Beatrice Strait, Jack Colvin, Joanna Merlin, and Hurt Hatfield. She has developed special applications of the Chekhov system to the needs of the 21st century. Auditions, commercials, film, television, and human health and development. While teaching in Russia and Europe and the US, Lisa shot nearly 200 hours of video documenting the growth of the technique around the world in the 1990s, contributing footage to several documentaries including from Russia to Hollywood. It is rare to be able to learn from a master who practices her craft as well as teaches. Please welcome Lisa Dalton. 
It is wonderful to have you join us today, and I'm very excited to bring to you some of the ideas that Michael Chekhov and his technique have given to me. When we start asking ourselves about the question of acting, it's really a wonderful thing to wonder what the actor does for society. Knowing the role of the actor in society I think is a good way to consider how you can go about becoming a really wonderful, brilliant actor. Can you imagine for a moment what life would be like if there were no actors? If you had no entertainment at all in the form of storytelling? I think it would be a rather bleak world. I think we turn to the world of storytelling in order to find a sense of community, a sense of who we are, a sense of support. And when we keep those things in mind, it's really exciting to know that there is a system of acting training that will respond to those needs. This system, Michael Chekhov's system, holds an idea at its heart that what the actor is there for is to give a gift to the audience. And that really, there's just two things that you need to act. One is an actor and someone to watch the performance. Without that, we're only in rehearsal. And so, we are always in the process of working with the audience in mind. Now, a very interesting thing happened when Mr. Chekhov was developing in his life. He suffered a very, very traumatic childhood. He had alcoholic father, and it was a very trying time in Russia, 1890s, very, very difficult time. And he went very early into the world of imagination. He began as early as the age of three, dressing up in different kinds of articles of clothing and becoming characters and entertaining his nanny and his mother. And these were the seeds for an imagination-based approach to acting. As his life unfolded, he became a student in the first studio of the Moscow Art Theater under Stanislavski. And Stanislavski was experimenting with some of the ideas of Freud in terms of using personal memories to recall and to activate your emotions. Well, Michael Chekhov, or Misha, as he was often known, had such a disturbing childhood that going to memories really wasn't his favorite thing to do. And he went right into the world of imagination. And not just imagination of the mind, but imagination that lives in the physical body. If we think about the primary means that an actor has to communicate with that ever so important audience, it's basically two ways through the sound of their voice and through the movement of their body. What the actor is actually thinking is not something that the audience can see. It is, however, an important task in unifying the voice and the body. And so with Mr. Chekhov's technique, we are interested in concentration, first and foremost, on an image, something from the realm of imagination. And then, after we concentrate on that image, we must give it to the audience. We call that giving process radiation. And that ability to engage an audience, ultimately, we could call that star quality. Star quality is something that I believe is innate in the actor. It's there within you. There's a book which Mr. Chekhov wrote. The name of the book is On the Technique of Acting. And in the preface of On the Technique of Acting, there is a chart, a chart for inspired acting. And that chart outlines a beautiful system with many, many tools. And it looks like the sun. It's an amazing thing because one could say that it's as if we have a sun within us and when our star quality is present 
And when we are in a peak performance, that sun is just radiating and pouring out. And you can see this in performers like Yul Brenner and Marilyn Monroe and Clint Eastwood. They have a kind of radiant energy that activates something in the viewer. It excites the viewer. And every actor who comes to commit themselves to the profession has experienced that condition, probably when they were just little kids. Somehow, in those moments, a seed was planted of how amazing it is to be able to offer a peak performance to the viewing audience. I've done a lot of scientific research trying to understand why Mr. Chekhov's techniques are so powerful. And one of the interesting things that scientists are speaking of is the law of harmonic attunement. It's a process where you can pluck a violin string and another one will vibrate. And one of the ways that Mr. Chekhov got us to understand how to pluck strings and activate them in an audience is through the psychological gesture. What we're going to do is we're going to cut to a little public service announcement and then we're going to see a clip about psychological gesture and we're going to speak a little bit more about that. I think you're going to find the psychological gesture to be one of the most brilliant tools that an actor can use. And interestingly enough, it's something you can use as a human being every day just to help your personal development, to change your mood, to change your attitude. So we're going to go now to that clip. deals with in the early days they had the school of del sartian acting where this was grief this was anger this was heroic well a psychological gesture was is stallone at the rocky so that creates in itself an emotion this is a an actual outward manifestation of emotion when I asked Chekhov what was his psychological gesture for Hamlet, he told me it was Gothic. He told me that Hamlet was a student. He told me the world was changing. And he said, Gothic, and it is going towards heaven. And he made this gesture. And it's extraordinary as a concept of construction. I said to him, I didn't think that was the gesture for Hamlet, that my gesture for Hamlet was a piercing moment when one tries to understand the world. Chekhov believed we seldom express ourselves directly, almost always indirectly. People in everyday life wear a mask to hide feelings and purposes from other people. Actors also create masks. The mask of the character is the sum total of the actor's preparation for the role. Psychological gesture is something that you might have heard about if you've been watching any shows like the Inside, Inside the Actor's Studio. Characters have a way of just appearing instantly in the actor when you do the psychological gesture. People who've used the psychological gesture and mentioned it include Jack Nicholson, Clint Eastwood, Johnny Depp. This is a very exciting tool. And we've brought some actors here with us today, some who've never experienced this, some who have experienced a little bit of Michael Chekhov's system. And we're going to have them come and try. You guys game for trying this? Yep. Sure, yes. Certainly. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. So we're looking at the psychological gesture and we're wondering what on earth is that? And so what I'd like you to do is just kind of fill in the space here. And the gesture is a movement that we're going to do, and it's done with the full body. And we're going to do a gesture of uh, opening and closing, okay? So if we start just standing comfortably, what we want to do is we want to open our body as fully as we possibly can, spreading our arms out. And now imagine that your energy can absolutely fill the whole space, the room, go through the room, all the way out into the sky. And now go ahead and just move through that space and feel 
your energy filling the whole space. It's huge. It's a giant body that you have. And now I'd like you to just stand for a moment and pick a point in the room. And everyone can do it at once or at separate times. Just say, hello, how are you? But imagine the sound wave. It's just huge. It radiates way out there. Hello, how are you? Hello, Ooh, hello. How, are you? how are you? Good. Now, anybody feel a little weird? Just a little <laughs> bit weird. A little self-conscious. Like, what is this woman doing? Well, let's try another thing, and then we'll see if we can connect and understand this concept. Everyone, make yourself as small as possible. And you're just going right down making yourself as tiny and dark. What we're doing is contracting into the smallest amount of space that we can possibly take up. Now, what I'd like you to do is in your imagination, keep your energy very, very contracted. And stand up. And now, when you're standing up, look at that same point in the room. And with a very contracted sound wave, say the very same line. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hi. Hello, how are you? And now when I clap my hand, Without opening your arms, just open your energy. Feel the difference. We're looking at the most basic, primal, psychological gesture that there is. The process of closing and the process of opening. Now, a person who might be quite terrified, do you think they would be expanded or do you think they would be contracted? Contract. Contract. Contracted. So can you feel that? Yes. That their energy would be very contracted. Now what is very exciting is if you, as an actor, were not actually scared, you could still contract, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pretty amazing. And you could contract take after take, night after night, rehearsal after rehearsal, over and over again and you would be absolutely in the moment, contracting right in that moment. Interesting thing about psychological gesture is we practice the big gesture, but the audience only sees a shadow of it in your energy field. I'm gonna show you a gesture now, and I'd like you to try this gesture, okay? The gesture starts on the side of your body and you push down and you turn your knee in and you hide your shoulder in your ear and push away. So let's go ahead and try that. I'd like to see how you feel. You're pushing down, turn the knee in, hide your ear in your shoulder. And now, start to ask yourself, what do I feel when I'm doing this? I'm scared. You feel scared? Yes. Hurt. Hurt. Who else? You can come out of it? Who else? How else do we feel? Yeah, I feel like I'm protecting myself. Uh, protecting yourself. Pushing and, something down. Good, good. And come on up. Now, I want you to just throw your arms open. So you clear yourself of that energy. Now, I used that as a psychological gesture for a rape victim. <laughs> In the scene, what you see is, um, Ivana, why don't you pretend you're a nurse, you're handing me a cup of coffee, okay? In the scene, how I'm standing is, this is in the hospital after the rape has happened. 
in my imagination, I'm imagining that gesture. And it affects everything about the way I feel, how I take it, how I stand. And it just keeps living within me. And I can turn it on and I can turn it off just instantly, just instantly. So no one ever sees this very big move. The psychological gesture is like a secret that the actor has. And they practice it. And in doing this giant movement that's got a very powerful emotion to it, a really strong imagination connected to it, and lots of physical activity connected to it, it lifts the actor from their everyday self right into the whole life of the character. This is why the psychological gesture is kind of the cherry on the cake in the Michael Chekhov acting system. <laughs> it's a really wonderful process. Does, I'd like to open the floor up for questions. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask? So wouldn't that be cheating on the way? <gasps> oh, that's a, that's a fun thing. Um, and thanks, Amalisha, for asking that, because it's very interesting how some actors respond to this process by thinking, wow, this is so fast and so easy that it can't be real. It can't be fair. It's like cheating. And you know what? I'm all in favor of cheating. <laughs> because who says we have to do it the hard way? Mm -hmm. Acting should be fun. It comes out of play. And the audiences come to us for fun. They want to have the fun of relating to a character. They want to see the character die. They want to see the character win. They want to see the character have their heart broken. They want to see their character find happiness and love. And it's playing. It's something they really want to play with. And so if the actor can bring a sense of play and fun to their performing technique, that technique is going to bring play and fun into the audience. We have a very interesting fact from an organization called HeartMath, heartmath.com. And they've noticed, they've done exact scientific measurements, noticing that for every five minutes that a person spends in the state of appreciation, their immune system is boosted for over six hours. And that means that when an audience watches you, every five minutes they spend appreciating your performance is a boost for six hours in their immune system. Wow. And that's why actors are so powerful. And we speak about the role of the actor. We know that there have been actors since the opening of humanity, from the caveman acting out the hunt for the tribe as a unifying tribal process, from the Greek theater coming out of the ancient mystery schools. And Mr. Chekhov believed that it was the theater of the future that would bring healing to humanity. And that's also why people are willing to pay millions of dollars to a particular actor who can activate masses of the audiences. Other questions? Um, yeah, um, in a lot of acting schools they talk about you know working from the outside in or inside out. Would you call this sort of more an outside in approach? That's a wonderful question. The ultimate application of this is a synthesized process. So there are tools within Michael Chekhov's chart of inspired acting which work for moving energy from the inside out, and there are other tools that draw it from the outside to the inside. Mm. Our body has brilliance in it. You know, just because our brain is thinking about driving down the road, the rest of our body is thinking about healing that little paper cut. Mm. There's something going on, an amazing energy in the body and we can control things in subconscious and superconscious levels through the realm of imagination. It's being used in every form of training today. There isn't an athlete, a salesperson, who isn't going to use the power of visualization. And that's a really inner process. And what we're looking to do is fix that situation where um, <laughs> an actor 
picks up a script and they know exactly what they want to do. Mm -hmm. They go to do it, it's like, ah, <laughs> does it come out that way? You ever experienced oh, yeah. that? It's very frustrating. And that's a mind-body gap. A lot of techniques will train the mind, uh, get you to be able to think the character's thoughts, but that doesn't necessarily get you to move the character's body. And that character, each of our characters, is as different from you personally as you are from the person standing next to you. So it's a very, very important task that you want to take up in terms of transformation, the law of transformation. We want to change who we are. And when we change, we know the audience can change. And when wow. we change, the audience knows they can change. And very exciting, Mr. Chekhov works on universal principles, which means you're tapping into the universe when you access these tools. And that makes everyone in the audience be able to personalize it the way that they want to personalize it. This is a wonderful thing, being able to create archetypal and universal performances and we're going to have more coming up. The idea that an actor can go beyond the playwright or the play is the first key to understanding the Chekhov system. The secret lies somewhere outside film, theater, and life, somewhere deep in the performer's imagination. Join us next time when the inspired acting system of Michael Chekhov delves ever more deeply into the secrets of radiation, atmosphere, and characterization. separate point, we have a greater chance to invoke our inspiration and to get into a creative state of our mind by our own will. If we use correctly one of these points, we shall see that other points awaken by themselves. Michael Chekhov often quoted the noted philosopher Joseph Jasser, who wrote, The technique of any art is sometimes apt to dampen the spark of inspiration in the mediocre artist, but the same technique in the hands of a master can fan that spark into an unquenchable flame. <laughs>